Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 15th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Not a lot happening uh, this weekend, which is probably good after uh, two weeks of too much excitement. Exchange servers, of course, are still being exploited. And now you sort of have the more commodity type of malware like ransomware hitting exchange servers that are still vulnerable. But we do have an interesting vulnerability in Wireshark. And, uh, well, it's interesting, not really quite as serious as it sounds, I think. Uh, it's referred to as a code execution vulnerability, which it is. But essentially, what it comes down to is that if you're observing uh, traffic in Wireshark, URLs are rendered as clickable. And this does not just include HTTP and HTTPS uh, URLs, but also, for example, file URLs or schemas like a DAF. And uh, if a user now clicks on one of these URLs, it may open and in some cases even execute the particular file. So as usual, well, if you're looking at a malicious uh, traffic capture or traffic capture of a possible exploit, there's a reason why you call it malicious or exploit. And sometimes the exploit could be directed at the analyst. So always uh, treat these packet captures with care. And yes, an update has been uh, released and uh, this has been a pretty old uh, vulnerability about for the last 17 years, I believe it says in the git commit, uh, this uh, behavior has been present in Wireshark. And we also have another update for Google Chrome. And now uh, this is the second time in about as many weeks that we have a remote code execution vulnerability that's being fixed in Google Chrome, which is already exploited in the wild. So make sure Google Chrome is doing its thing and updating itself. And NetLab 360 ran into an interesting new malware that is going after IoT devices. They're using a number of well-known exploits. What's really different here is what they're doing to these devices after uh, they infect them. And that's, well, uh, setting up a simple honeypot. Now, I always want you to install our honeypot uh, in your networks. I'm certainly not going as far as uh, using an exploit to uh, deploy my honeypot, so uh, not involved here. Uh, but essentially what this uh, bot does is it detects incoming uh, scans uh, to the particular device after it, of course, secures uh, the device that it just infected. And then it essentially is scanning back any host that is scanning the honeypot so the assumption they're probably not wrong here is that systems that are scanning it are themselves infected and vulnerable and easy picking for the particular exploit that this particular botnet is using. Of course, they're also hoping that uh, the bots that infected uh, those devices aren't themselves patching uh, the device in order to prevent additional exploitation. In my experience, it's uh, sort of really hit or miss. Uh, some bots do a little bit patching, some just take down, for example, uh, telnet servers and the like. But for the most part, uh, sort of commodity malware that is scanning IoT devices is not securing any device that they are infecting. They are, however, often removing competing malware that they find on the device. And if you noticed a lot of uh, people tweeting about uh, Memphis, the city in Tennessee uh, this uh, weekend, well, uh, this uh, was uh, to experiment with apparently a bug in Twitter. Uh, Twitter automatically suspended any user for 12 hours if uh, their tweet contained the word Memphis. It looks like by now uh, this bug has uh, been fixed, uh, but uh, just uh, to be sure, I'll probably not uh, mention the word Memphis in the tweet about uh, this podcast. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.